I would like to demonstrate how to read the LRC notation for timeouts. This notation is what made the count of 85 different timeouts by Fink and Mao possible, and it is the basis of our count of 266,682 knots. We will use some conventions here. The two ends of the tie are the blades. There's a thin blade and there's a thick blade. We will start any tie knot with the tie draped over my neck, with the active blade to the right. I will use right for you, the viewer, uh, as my right right now. If you use right on yourself or right in the mirror, uh, you may end up tying the mirror image knots to what you were looking for. We will do two different tie knots today to demonstrate the start front and the start back knot types. For a front starter, we will be looking at the half Windsor, and for the back starter, the Pratt, which is also known as the Shelby. When faced with a knot sequence, the number of L, R, and C symbols tells you how it starts. For an odd number, the knot starts by crossing in the back, and for an even number, it starts by crossing in the front. We start the knot by crossing the active blade across the other blade, the passive blade. In front or in back, depending on uh, the knot structure. And if you do cross in the back, you will, end up, you will need to reverse the entire tie. Because otherwise, as you tie the knot, you will end up having the seam visible in the finished knot in the front, in the facade. Both of the knots today, both the Half Windsor and the Pratt or Shelby, uh, are classical flat facade uh, knots where uh, the tie has a nice flat even surface in the front. And so we will be using the broad blade uh, as our active blade. For other knots, notably the Trinity or the Eldridge, the thin blade is used to create more interestingly patterned facades. Now that I have crossed the blades, uh, you should notice how the stationary uh, part of the tie, the two uh, parts going around my neck, and the passive blade that hangs straight down, divide my torso into three regions. There is a left region, there is a right region, and a center region. The knot string will tell you the sequence in which the active blade passes through each region in turn. And we have already started the knot with a left move, going in into the left region. For the half Windsor, it is a cross in the front kind of knot. So I keep the tie with the uh, nice part without the seam uh, to the front draped across my shoulders. The first symbol is an L, so we start the tie by crossing the active blade, the broad blade, uh, in front of the other, the passive thin blade. Next symbol after the starting L is an R for right, so we continue to the right region. The blade was in front uh, for the first crossing, so now we go in the back of the tie behind it. As we go through the moves, we will alternate between front bows and back bows. Now comes a C for center, so we move in the front now, because we just went back, up to the center, like this. Uh, after the C is an L for left, so we go back and to the left. Coming out here. Uh, next symbol is an R uh, for right. We go across the front. This sets up the finish of the tie. This part here is going to be the façade, the visible part of the tie. Uh, after this R, there's a C. We go behind and up to the center. And now comes the symbol U that we haven't talked about uh, yet. This stands for under and uh, tells us to find the last bow we created, the last piece that went across the tie knot, and put the active blade under that bow. So we go in and under, we pull it out below and that finishes the tie knot and all that's left is adjusting it uh, to make it look good, tightening the tie and the knot is done. Now for the Pratt or Shelby. 
This is a flat facade knot again, one of the 85 classic knots uh, counted by Fink and Mao. Uh, so we tie it with a broad blade as our active blade. Uh, the knot sequence uh, has five L, R or C symbols. So it's a backstart knot, which means that we have to flip the knot. If we don't, the seam part will end up draping across as the final facade making it slightly less uh, nice to look at. And uh, it starts with an L. So the first move of the knot will be to move across the thin blade in the back, like this. Now we go ahead and we read the knotting string. After the L comes the, a C for center. So we cross in front to the middle, like this. After C comes another L, we cross in the back down to the left again, so that we wound uh, around this uh, strand once. Now comes an R, this crosses in front, because the last one was behind, across to the right. This actually sets up the facade for us. This will be the front part of the knot. After R comes C, we go behind and up in the center. And then a U, which means that we need to find the last bow, the last piece that's settled on the knot, and uh, go underneath that bow, uh, pulling the tie through. This finishes the knot, we can tighten it up and uh, uh, adjust it to uh, look good. To summarize the rules for reading a tie knot, first, you count the LRC symbols. Is the count odd? Then reverse the tie and start behind. The first symbol tells you where to start. And you cross the blades. Now read the symbols one after the other. If it's an R, you move into the right region. If it's an L, you move into the left region. And if it's a C, you move to the center. The U goes underneath the most recent bow you made. For some knots, uh, you may uh, want to go deeper than the latest bow. For instance, there is the Christensen cross, which uh, takes you underneath the two latest bows at once. The novel knots, uh, such as the Trinity or the Eldridge, uh, can use several under moves uh, at different points in the tying sequence and they might not end with the active blade going downwards as the classical knots all do. Do you want to know more? I have written a popular science article on this and on how to count the tie knots. And we have a research article uh, peer-reviewed and uh, recently appeared in uh, the journal Peer J Computer Science with all the details of our work.